So I recently sold one of my listings in just one weekend. Now the truth is most of my listings do take a few weeks to sell, but it's not uncommon for me to sell a home in just one weekend. Now I know what you're probably saying right about now. Well, Malcolm, that's just your market. I bet all the homes in your area are selling that quickly. And you're right. Your local market does play a big role in how quickly a home sells. Here in Maryland, our average days on market is about 30. So selling a home in just three days is still pretty good. But regardless of your real estate market, there's still some marketing techniques and hacks that you or your real estate agent can use that I can all almost guarantee will cause your home to sell faster and for more money. And that is what I'm gonna share with you guys today. My secrets for how I sell my listings so quickly. So my first secret is Zillow 3D tours and Zillow videos. Now keep in mind, I'm not saying just video and just 3D tours. I'm saying specifically Zillow video and Zillow 3D tours. You see, Zillow is the number one consumer platform for searching for homes and Zillow has an algorithm of how it presents those homes. So just an example, let's say somebody searches for three bedrooms, two bathrooms in Annapolis, Maryland. There may be a hundred properties that meet that criteria and Zillow has an algorithm of which ones are gonna show at the top of that list and which ones are gonna show at the bottom of that list. And as a real estate agent, Zillow actually tells me what I can do to my listing to increase it in their search algorithm. So some of these things include having a Zillow video, a Zillow 3D tour, having all the information filled out, having more pictures, and having an open house scheduled. And this makes sense. If I do all this on my listing and the next door neighbor only has 10 pictures, doesn't have all the information filled out, doesn't have a video, doesn't have an open house scheduled, doesn't have a 3D tour, their listing just wouldn't be as good of an experience for the Zillow user as my listing would be. This is why Zillow ranks my listings higher. Now there are two ways you can get a Zillow video tour. One, you can download the Premier Agent app and you can create a tour yourself. The challenge is you can only shoot it on your phone. It can only be one minute long. It can't have music and it can't have any branding added to it. Now, the other way and the method that I use is using a Zillow certified videographer. So they actually pay Zillow for the certification. By using one of their videographers, you can have up to a five minute video tour. It can be edited on a computer, have music, have your brands and your call to actions in it as well. Now there is one more Zillow hack that I use to get my listings to rank a little bit higher. And so here's the secret. I always have an open house scheduled whether I intend to do an open house or not. I typically schedule them one or two months out in advance. And when the time comes for the open house, I just change the date for the next month. And once again, I only do this because Zillow ranks properties higher that have an open house scheduled. So my next trick is don't ever, ever, ever have $999 in your list price or any crazy variation of that. You see, consumers typically search for homes in about a $25,000 bracket. So they may search from 350 to 375 or 350 to 400 or 400 to 450, but they usually round up to the nearest $25,000 mark. So let's say you list your home for $399,000 $999, but one of my buyers that I'm working with is looking at homes between 400 and 425,000. Guess what? You are literally $1 off from showing up in that property search. So by listing your home for $1 less or $100 less or $1,000 less, you very well may be sacrificing hundreds or thousands of motivated pre-approved buyers from looking at your property online. So my next trick is to list your home on a Friday morning. So we all know that homes are most valuable the first day that they are listed. And every day they are on the market, they're just a little less valuable in the eye of the buyer. And when do buyers typically go out and look at properties? On the weekend. So by listing it on a Friday, this still gives the buyer time to schedule a showing for it Saturday or Sunday. And buyers get very excited about being one of the very first people inside a brand new listing. So let's say you didn't follow this advice and instead you listed a home for sale on a Monday. Well, most buyers cannot look at that property until Saturday or Sunday. So by the time they get into that property, it's already been on the market for five or six days. And just kind of in the mind of the buyer, they're just not as excited about that compared to that property only being on the market for one day. So my next tip is to list your home slightly below market value. Now I can hear you roll your eyes right now and I know what you're probably saying. But Malcolm, you said you're gonna show us how to sell your home for more money, not less. And yes, I am and I will. Just hang tight for a moment and hear me out on this. So here's the truth. Your estimate of your market value is probably wrong, but don't worry, it's not your fault is most likely the data that you're going off of. So let me explain. So probably about 90% of my transactions, we have the seller contributing to the buyer's closing costs. And typically this is between three and 4% of the purchase price. And this is a loophole that many agents use and essentially a trick to wrap the buyer's closing costs into their mortgage. So when you go on Zillow and you see that your neighbor's home sold for $400,000, there is a really good chance that they gave $12,000 back to the buyer 
at closing out of that 400,000. So really it's a net sell of $388,000, not $400,000. So once again, I don't know the exact statistics on this, but for me, it's probably about 80 to 90% of all my transactions have the sellers giving the buyers cash at closing to cover their closing costs. So by listing your home at $388,000, you're going to trick all the buyers out there into thinking that they found a fantastic deal. And when they come to you and say, hey, this looks like a great deal, we wanna buy this house, but we need $12,000 back to cover our closing costs. And you're gonna say, yeah, absolutely, not a problem, but if I'm giving you $12,000 back, I need to sell this home for 400,000. So the next trick that I often use in my listings is virtual staging. So they've done studies in staged homes sell for more money than vacant homes. But staging is not cheap. It can cost several thousand dollars and for most homes is not worth it. But that's where digital staging comes in hand. Now digital staging only works on vacant properties. So what I do is I use a service called boxbrownie.com. Yes, I know it's a weird name. I don't get it either. And they superimpose photorealistic furniture into my vacant properties. And this can have a huge impact on your listing. You see, buying a home is a very emotional process. And unfortunately, a lot of buyers just don't have very good vision of what a home could be. And sometimes we just need to hold their hand and actually show them the potential of a home. Now, virtual staging is still not cheap. I usually spend about $30 per picture. So typically I only do this for the most important pictures, maybe the dining room, the living room, the kitchen, maybe the master suite, and that's it. So next, let's talk about Facebook advertising. Yes, this absolutely works to help me sell my listings faster. You see, what I do is I take that video tour that I have the Zillow videographer do, and I run it as a Facebook ad in that area. Now, I don't put the price in the ad itself. Typically, I have a link in the ad, and I tell people, for current price and full details, click this link. That link takes them back to my webpage where they can find all that information. And yes, Facebook has greatly cracked down on a real estate agent's ability to use Facebook ads to sell listings. But even now in 2020, this is still a very effective marketing technique that my team and I are using. So my next tip is if your carpet is original to the property, yeah, you probably need to replace it. Updating your carpet and paint, in my opinion, has some of the highest ROI out of any upgrade in your property. And don't even think about trying to offer a carpet allowance. If your carpet is ugly, the pictures are not gonna turn out well, the video is not gonna turn out well, and people aren't even gonna bother scheduling a showing on your property. This all goes back to buying a home being an emotional experience and ugly carpets stir up bad emotions in the buyers. If your carpet is 15 to 20 years old and your walls have scuff marks and scratches in them, I absolutely believe that an investment of seven to $8,000 to get all new carpet and a fresh coat of paint can help sell your home for $15,000, $20,000 more. If you have bad paint and bad carpet, this really can be one of the best return on investments that you can make into your home. Now let's talk about coming soon status. And this is something that I do on all of my listings. Now every state's a little bit different, but here in Maryland, the public websites can't see coming soon listings. Only real estate agents and buyers who are working with real estate agents can see coming soon listings. But nonetheless, this is still a very effective technique here in Maryland. So coming soon means that buyers can look at the pictures, but they can't schedule a showing on that property. It's not an active listing yet. And this drives buyers wild. Consumers want what they can't have. So usually I do coming soon status for one week. And during this time, I'm promoting it on my social media accounts. I'm running Facebook ads. I'm uploading the video tour to my YouTube channel and doing a coming soon status combined with Facebook ads and going active on a Friday sometimes gets me six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 showings that very first weekend on my listings. So my next tip is to make your home as bright as possible. Dark rooms are just depressing. They are. Remember I was saying this is an emotional experience for the buyers? Light, bright rooms just feel more attractive. So if you have a dark color paint in a room, paint it a lighter color. If you have dark furniture, get rid of it or cover it up somehow. If you have blinds and curtains, make sure they are wide open whenever you have showings. Make sure all of your light bulbs in your home are working. And I even recommend leaving the lights on in every single room when you know that there's gonna be a showing. If you wanna learn how to prepare your home for the real estate market, check out this video I did right over here. And if you live in Maryland and are considering selling in the next 12 months, my team and I would love to have a conversation with you. Schedule your free consultation at thelawsongroupmd.com. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys over in the next video.